This is Mac OS Ken. Raising a target in a very boring way, Apple may be silencing dissent in retail and make way for Beats Studio Pro. It is Thursday, the 20th of July, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Use code MacOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash MacOSCAN50 for 50% off. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. This story ends with a sizable price target rise. It's not going to sound like it, though. Apple is the most boring buy-rated stock. That is the word from Jeffrey's analyst, Andrew Yurkwitz, according to a piece from MarketWatch. Reminds me of a line from the movie Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Asked whether he's nouveau riche, Jim Williams says yes, he is, but he's found it's the riche that counts. So fine, Apple is the most boring buy-rated stock. It's the buy that counts. According to Yerkwitz, what the Cupertino company lacks in investor pizzazz, it makes up for with consistency. Its moat has been, remains, and will be its ability to integrate software services with its hardware that builds a regular replacement cycle, ability to slowly raise prices, and take share. In our conversations with investors, the analyst says he and his hear little excitement on growth prospects with a focus on the predictability and resilience of service growth. He thinks they will see some of that growth on Apple's third quarter earnings call, set for Thursday, the 3rd of August. It's going to be anemic in his estimation, but anemic growth will look good after December and March quarters that saw revenues decline year over year. All of that said, Urquitz thinks participants will be listening for the pizzazz they lack on the earnings call, MarketWatch has the analyst expecting questions about new growth levers such as AI and Apple Vision Pro. Of course, they'll want to quiz Apple on continuing growth for services as well. Really, though, it is cool if it stays boring. Ultimately, Irkwitz expects this earnings call will bring us back to the reality of iPhone and services being the two most important drivers of the stock, With that, the analyst reiterated his buy rating on Apple shares. He also raised his price target on the shares from $210 to $225, calling the shares a source of safety in uncertain economic conditions. Boring. A couple of Urquhart's long-for buzzy buzzwords got tied anew to Apple on Wednesday. On the AR VR Vision Pro side, a piece from Upload VR says the graphics powerhouse Unity has launched a closed beta for Vision OS support. On the application page, Unity says it is excited to collaborate with Apple to bring familiar and powerful authoring tools for creating immersive games and apps for this new spatial computing platform, Apple Vision Pro. Your apps will get access to benefits such as pass-through and dynamic foveated rendering, in addition to popular Unity features like AR Foundation and XR Interaction Toolkit. I could say more, but it wouldn't make sense to most people, myself included. The point is there's movement. Developers can apply now on the Unity site. More buzzy, less certain, was a piece from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. According to the stream through which many leaks run, Apple is quietly working on artificial intelligence tools that could challenge those of OpenAI, Google, and others, but the company has yet to devise a clear strategy for releasing the technology to consumers. Speaking as somebody who has been waiting for this, please allow me to say, finally... 
Maybe. Put an asterisk next to finally. I can't remember whether it was on In A Few Minutes or Mac OS Ken Live, Mark II, or The Daily Observations, but on one or more of those shows, I slash we talked about this possibility slash probability before ChatGPT and its ilk made the scene. When Apple was seen to be buying up smaller search technologies, a lot of people said Apple would eventually launch some sort of search com to take on Google or Bing or whomever. I didn't think so. I thought Apple would take on Google or Bing or whomever by taking the search stuff it was buying and making a smarter Siri. Of course, we don't know that that's what Apple's going to do. Even if German said that that's what Apple was going to do, we still wouldn't know it for sure. But we're nowhere near that, with German saying the company has yet to devise a clear strategy for releasing the technology to consumers. That said, he says the company's built its own framework to create large language models. It's also reportedly created a chatbot service that some engineers call Apple GPT. I really hope that's just a working name. Well, the company doesn't yet have a concrete plan, German says people familiar with the work believe Apple is aiming to make a significant AI-related announcement next year. More news in a moment, but first a word from Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and sponsor of today's show. If the heat's got you thinking that even the microwave is too much, grab Lunch To Go with Factor. The Lunch To Go menu offers effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you are. They're perfect when time is short or the kitchen's just too darn hot. No heat. Just eat. Of course, they've still got those amazing meals I've told you about, too like the ranch baked chicken with cheesy broccoli rice and roasted mushrooms, and the broccoli cheddar ground beef. Both were great, and both were super quick. I do 10 minutes in the oven, but 2 minutes in the microwave would do it too. Super ingredients, super recipes, and super convenient. See what you've been missing. Head to factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 and use code macOSCan50 to get 50% off. That's code macOSCan50 at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 to get 50% off. Taste what is made Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Use code macOSCan50 for 50% off at factormeals.com slash macOSCan50. Word of an incident that looks like another uncool move by Apple that, I don't want to say against retail employees, maybe an uncool move that negatively affects retail employees. A piece from Apple Insider has sources at the store level saying that the internal app they use to talk to others in the company has been restricted. The latest blow in what the site calls a quiet war with its retail staff is editing comments seen as negative or critical in the Loop internal communication tool. While it had been seen by one anonymous so-and-so as a refreshing insight into how other Apple retail employees felt and reinforced to them that they weren't alone in their frustrations, it's apparently been converted to a place for shiny, happy people working. Now the piece has another tipster saying, employees must agree to a new, more restrictive set of ground rules before accessing Loop, Every post is screened by moderators before it is shown on the tool, and it seems anything more critical than neutral is being filtered out. The way Apple Insider sees it, the company has put itself in a precarious position with this move. Apple likes to keep internal talk internal. If employees can't speak freely, they're likely to take their internal talk to 
external venues like employee groups on Slack and Discord. There, they are likely to say what some have been telling Apple Insider, that it feels like a blatant tactical move to suppress union organization. The move by Apple has removed a reliable way for employees to organize, unionize, and compare experiences in a workplace environment, so says Apple Insider. Apple has hit would-be retail shoppers to a few tax holidays on the horizon. Tax holidays are a state-by-state -state thing, set up to help people buy necessary gear as students head back to school. Separate from Apple's own back-to-school promotion, another piece from Apple Insider says the Cupertino company has set up a tax holiday sale page, letting certain shoppers know about certain deals. Six states are listed on the page so far, with tax holidays scheduled for Alabama from the 21st of July through the 23rd, Arkansas for the 5th and 6th of August, Florida from the 24th of July through the 6th of August, Missouri from the 4th of August through the 6th, Tennessee from the 28th of July through the 30th, and West Virginia from the 4th of August through the 7th. The dates are all over the place, and so are the deals, said again not by Apple, but by the various states. That said, Apple's page does keep a list of what discounts are available where. Folks wanting to take advantage can learn more at apple.com slash shop slash campaigns slash tax hyphen holiday. Because why make it easy for anyone? And finally today, Beat Studio 3 is dead. Long live Beat Studio Pro. Fifteen years after the first pair of Beats hit the market, and five years after the introduction of Beat Studio 3, a piece from TechCrunch says the Apple subsidiary will hit with brand new Beats Studio Pro headphones in the next couple of days. I've glanced a few reviews, and they're better than fine, good, not great, or great if you're as much about whistles, bells, and style as you are about the noise. Gone is the old muddy sound that TechCrunch refers to as a common beats overcompensation when the brand first launched. Writing the review for TechCrunch, Brian Heater says, I likely say some version of this every time the company releases a new pair of headphones, but Beats isn't, and likely never will be, an audiophile brand. If you prioritize sound quality above all else, I still recommend Sony's WH-1000XM5 in the over-ear category. If you've asked me to recommend a pair of plain headphones in the past couple of years, I've almost certainly recommended them. Still, he likes the Beat Studio Pro. They're vibing headphones, he writes. They're the headphones you wear to pump yourself up. Features that turn heater on include the excellent noise cancelling, the comfort, the stated 40 hours of battery life on a charge, spatial audio, and compatibility with lossless audio. In terms of connectivity, Apple site says the cans offer Class 1 Bluetooth for exceptional wireless connectivity, USB-C audio for simultaneous listening and charging, and 3.5mm analog input for wired audio sources. As I say, there are lots of reviews out there. Chances are five sites will give you five different takes. Priced at $349, same as the Studio 3s they replace. TechCrunch says they will be in stores this Sunday, though. Had I ordered last night, both Apple and Amazon assured me that they'd be rocking my world by this Friday, the 21st of July. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Use code macOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash macOSCAN50 for 50% off. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. 
advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. <laughs>